Roswell Flight Test Crew, here today to do our flight testing on the DJI Mavic. To see the unboxing and setup, be sure to check out our previous video. And to keep up with the latest on drones, be sure to click subscribe. So before we can go flying, the first step is to calibrate the aircraft compass. To begin this process, remove any metal objects from your person and stand clear of anything made of metal in the environment. Once you begin the calibration process in the app, the light on the rear of the aircraft will turn yellow, and you'll see a little icon showing you what to do. Begin by holding the aircraft horizontally and rotating it in a counterclockwise direction. Then you'll see the app change. When the light turns steady green, we're ready to move on to the next step. Turn it on its side, continue to rotate counterclockwise. Blinking green means the process is complete. The controller's also got this little screen built in, which kind of reminds me of the Altair Robotics X-Star. There's a lot of useful information here. You've got basic telemetry like your altitude, distance to home, and airspeed, and also the battery condition on the controller and the drone. And in the upper right-hand corner, we've even got propeller RPM. So lots of good information for you, even if you don't have your iPad connected. So to start the motors, you push both sticks down into the center. And then to lift up, you push up on the left stick and it starts to move up. Now when it comes time to land, it's kind of interesting because you pull it into where you want to land, you're obviously pulling down on the left stick to reduce throttle, and when you're hovering about a foot off the ground, it just sort of stops there. At that point, go ahead and push down firmly on the left stick, hold it there for a few seconds, and essentially auto lands itself. And it does a really nice job too. Settles down nice and smooth thanks to all those different sensors on the belly. So now that we've got the preliminaries out of the way, let's go flying. Okay, so now that we've got her up flying around, and there's not much to say other than she flies like a DJI, which is to say incredibly confident and smooth in the air. And the position hold, it's just unreal. I've never seen anything like it. It appears to be flawless. I mean, it just, it just hangs there like a stone in the sky nice and smooth, the turns are very even, the video on my, my tablet here looks great, I haven't seen a single glitch yet, I, it's, it's really quite something. Now the one thing I notice is that it's not especially peppy, even if I move the sticks all the way to the stops, she, she goes, but still not fast. And that's why DJI has given this aircraft two modes. This first mode we're in here allows all the collision avoidance sensors to work perfectly. However, you can change over to sport mode, which gives you a lot more kick, but there's a trade-off. The collision avoidance sensors won't necessarily see an obstacle coming up because you're moving pretty fast. So let's change over to sport mode and see what that's like. So I've gone ahead and landed and changed the aircraft over to sport mode, because the first time you do it, it's a two-step process. Now there's a little switch right here on the side of the control radio, labeled sport mode, but if you flip that, it doesn't actually do anything. You need to enable sport mode first inside the app. So here's how you do that. Click on the menu, just here, select that, and then flip this switch, and when we fly, we're in sport mode. And this thing really moves. So with sport mode enabled, I see a considerable change in performance. This is now a very, very fun aircraft to fly. I mean, you can really throw it around the sky. According to DJI, the top speed is about 40 miles per hour, and that really moves for this little aircraft. Now to give you a sense for how sport mode and the standard mode compare, I'm going to conduct a little drag race with a split screen here. So on the top of your screen, you've got the Mavic in sport mode, and on the bottom of the screen, you've got it in standard mode. And so we will start the race in three, two, one. So one drawback to sport mode is it makes the collision avoidance system less effective. Let's take a look at how it works. So you've got these two cameras on the front of the aircraft, which actually allow it to see what's out in front of it. Now as you come within about 7 meters or 20 feet of an obstacle, you're going to start seeing indicators on your screen here. They'll be green initially, and then they'll turn yellow and red as you get closer and closer. And when you get too close, you literally can't move any closer. As you can see here, I'm full forward on the right stick, but the aircraft is just refusing to move any further forward because it can see the obstacle in front of it. 
and that's a pretty cool feature. However, having seen it in action, I want to know if it would work in some more challenging scenarios. The park where we're flying today is built on a hill, so the ground sort of subtly rises. So my question is, if I'm flying low over the ground, and the ground is rising to meet the aircraft, will it recognize the threat and stop itself? So as you can see, it picks up the ground rising to meet it and stops itself. That's pretty cool. Now another thing is, I'm unlikely to fly into the side of a barn. However, I could get tangled up in some bramble or something which isn't solid, that doesn't prevent a sort of a, a, a natural barrier to the aircraft. So I'm curious to see if it'll stop when I'm in danger of flying into some bushes that are along the edge of the field here. It stops, it won't let me get any closer to that ramp. That's a really cool feature. Now this collision avoidance is wonderful, but it does raise a new question in my mind. What if I want a cool shot that relies on some proximity flying? Will the obstacle avoidance prevent me from getting that shot? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try and fly under this slide here, see whether or not the aircraft stops me. Goes right through. So this is a very sophisticated, intelligent system. So next, let's take a look at the camera. And the Mavic packs quite a sophisticated camera into this little package. It's mounted on a three-axis gimbal, and as you can see, it produces some very stable video. So this camera can capture 4K video and 12 megapixel stills, which are the same base statistics as the DJI Inspire 1. So that's pretty impressive performance given the price and the small form factor. So inside the app itself, you've got sophisticated controls for the camera's different settings. And right here at your fingertip, you can control the pitch angle of the camera to compose your shots on the vertical axis. Here's our flight endurance test. Also, it's well worth noting that after I got the Mavic hovering, I didn't touch the controls again until it was time to land. That's an extremely good position hold result. It's better than anything we've ever seen before, and it was made all the more impressive by the fact that we had five to seven knot winds during this test. So that was our flight test of the DJI Mavic. To see the unboxing and setup, check out our previous video. And be sure to click subscribe to keep up with the latest on drones. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Fly safe.